It turns out that in the 1400 year history of Islam, detractors have tried several times to steal the body of the Prophet from his grave. The first attempt to steal the body was made by the Egyptian Fatimi ruler, Ba'amrullah. He was the sixth Fatimid Caliph. He was a tyrant, a cruel and criminal. Ibn Najr wrote in his book, History of Baghdad, Ba'amrullah hatched this plot to attract the attention of the world to Egypt and thus allowing the residents of Egypt to gain respect. The rulers spent a lot of money to build an expensive enclosure for this purpose. Abu al-Fatuh, the governor of Mecca in Medina, was to carry out this plot. When Abu al-Fatuh arrived in Medina, the residents of Medina came to know about this plot. They gathered around him. Qari Zalbani recited the following verses of the Quran. But if they violate their oaths after their covenant and attack your religion with disapproval and criticism, then fight the leaders of disbelief. For surely their oaths are nothing to them so that they may stop. Will you not fight a people who have violated their oaths and intended to expel the messenger while they attack you first? Do you fear them? Allah has more right that you should fear him if you are believers. This made Abu al-Fatuh terrified. He said, I shall never carry out this dirty plan, even if the ruler slays me. In the meanwhile, a big storm swept through this area that evening. Many houses, animals, and people died of the storm. Abu al-Fatuh found a good excuse to run away from Medina. Allah saved the Prophet ﷺ and his companions from these criminals. Ruler Ba'amrullah hatched a second plot, but failed again. Ibn Sa'dun has reported this in his book, that Ba'amrullah sent some people to carry out his evil plans. These people started residing in a house near the Prophet's mosque and started digging an underground tunnel to reach the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. During this, a fearful lightning struck the area and the following voice was heard announcing very loudly, your Prophet's grave is being dug. The residents of Medina rushed out of their houses and started investigating. They got hold of the culprits and took them out one by one. In 557 after Hijra, 1164 CE, it was reported that some Christians made an effort to remove the body of the Prophet There was a very pious ruler of the Zangid dynasty. He was Sultan Nur al-Din, Abu al-Qasim Mahmud ibn Imad al-Din Zangi, his general, Asad al-Din Shirkuh ibn Shadzi is the uncle of the great Salah al-Din Yusuf al-Ayyubi, the conqueror of Jerusalem. One night after Tahajjud, he saw the Prophet ﷺ in his dream. The Prophet ﷺ was pointing out towards two persons of reddish color and saying, Save me from these two persons. Nur al-Din woke up and was perplexed. He did ablution, performed his salat, and went back to sleep. He again saw the same dream. He woke up and again offered his salat and went to sleep. He saw the same dream the third time. He lost his sleep and described his dream to his advisor, Jamaluddin al-Musali. The advisor said to him, why are you sitting here? You should go to Medina immediately. He added, please do not relate your dream to any other person. Nuruddin started his journey towards Medina the next morning. He took 20 persons with him, including the advisor. They carried many expensive gifts with them for charity. They reached Medina in 16 days. Nuruddin entered the Prophet's mosque and offered salat. Then he did salutation to the Prophet and his companions. 
Nuruddin sat down in the mosque and wondering what to do next. The advisor announced, Sultan has brought lots of gifts for charity. These gifts will be distributed among the residents of Medina. The Sultan granted a gift to each resident of Medina turn by turn. The Sultan looked at each recipient very carefully to match the features with those seen in the dreams. Finally, the Sultan inquired, Have all the residents visited me? The answer of the residents was yes, indeed. Sultan said, Are you really sure? People said there are two pious Moroccans who do not accept anything from others. They rather feed the needy very generously. They fast regularly, offer tahajjud, and offer salutation to the Prophet wasallam day and night. They also visit Quba Mosque once a week. Sultan explained, Subhanallah. The Sultan then ordered that both of them be brought to him. The Moroccan said, We are very rich and don't need charity. The Sultan recognized them and asked them, Where do you come from? They said, We are Moroccans. We came here for Hajj and wish to stay here as neighbor of the Prophet The Sultan said, why don't you speak the truth? At that, they kept quiet. The Sultan inquired about the residence. The residence was near the sacred chamber. Then the Sultan accompanied them to the residence. He found a lot of expensive goods lying there. Then the Sultan kept roaming around the house alone till he removed an old piece of rug from the floor of the house. He saw a newly dug underground tunnel there leading to the sacred chamber. The men got terrified. The Sultan said to them, Now tell me the truth. Then they confessed. We are actually Christians. The king has sent us here as Hajji from Morocco. He gave lots of money to us so that we could remove the body of the Prophet. In order to achieve our goal, we started residing in this house nearest to the sacred chamber. We dig underground tunnel at night and carry the mud in Moroccan bags to Baqi Cemetery and spread the mud around the graves. When we reached the near sacred chamber, a very fearful lightning struck and an earthquake shook the earth. Now you have arrived and caught us. We confess that we were about to commit the crime. The Sultan ordered the execution of these criminals. He thanked Allah who chose him to discover the plot. First two plots were made between 386 Hijra and 411 Hijra. The third plot took place in 558 Hijra. After this third plot, Sultan Nuruddin ordered to dig a deep trench around the sacred chamber. He filled this trench with molten lead. In this way, nobody will ever be able to reach the graves through underground tunnels. It will be appropriate to mention here that the Sultan stayed in a house in Medina called Dar al Ziyafa and distributed charity to the residents of Medina from this location. This house existed just outside the door known as Bab Umar. This house was included in the Prophet's mosque during the second Saudi extension of the mosque. The site where the lead was melted was just outside Bab al Salam and was known as Saqifat al Rasas. When Qamash market caught fire on the 18th Rajab, 1397 Hijra, this house was also burnt in the fire. The house where the Christians stayed and dug the tunnel was located outside the present window across the sacred chamber in the southernmost wall of the mosque. Sultan Nuruddin rahimahullah also constructed universities and mosques in all these cities he controlled. These universities were principally concerned with teaching the Quran and Ahadith. Sultan Nuruddin rahimahullah himself enjoyed memorizing and learning a hadith. His shuyukh even awarded him an ijaz in hadith. He had free hospitals constructed in his cities as well and built caravanserais on the roads for travelers and pilgrims. He held court several times a week so that people could seek justice from him against his generals, governors, or other employees who had committed some crime. In the Muslim world, he remains a legendary figure of military courage, piety, and modesty. Even his foes, the Christians, acknowledged, said that he loved, above all else, justice. 
the famed historian, geographer, and poet, Sheikh Abu al Hussein Muhammad ibn Jubayr, detailed the fourth attempt to remove the blessed body of the Prophet. He said on the 29th of Dhul Qa'dah, 578 after Hijrah, I arrived in Alexandria during my excursion tour of Egypt. We left Alexandria on the 8th of Dhul Hijjah. We saw there that a very big crowd of people had come out of their homes to see the Roman Christian prisoners. These prisoners were brought to the city on camels with their faces towards the tails of the camels. Bugles were being blown and other music was being played around them. We inquired about these prisoners. We were given a detailed picture of their cruel activities, which was as follows. The Christians of Syria had built some boats near Mediterranean Sea and transported these boats on the backs of camels to the shores of the Red Sea. There they equipped the boats for war activities. They then set out in the sea with these boats and plundered the caravans of pilgrims from Mecca. When they reached the river Nam, they burnt 16 boats of other people. Then they reached Izab and captured a caravan of pilgrims coming from Jidda. Similarly, they overpowered a caravan which was traveled from Qaus towards Izab and slayed all the people. Two boats of traders were coming from Yemen with food grain for Mecca and Medina. They burned the storage of this food grain. They carried out many such criminal activities. Their most treacherous plan was to remove the body of the Prophet Muhammad from the sacred chamber. They announced it boldly and started heading towards Medina. When they were about one day's journey away from Medina, the famous Haji Lulu came with a few Moroccan youths who were experts in sea warfare. They arrested these Christians and took some of them out. They also sent some of those prisoners to other cities to be put to sword. Some prisoners were sent to Mecca in Medina. The prisoners whom we saw were brought to Alexandria. In this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from these criminals. Tabari, the famous historian, has described how the fifth attempt took place. The head of the service personnel of the Prophet's mosque was Shamsuddin Sawab Lamti, who was a very gentle and kind person. Sawab said that he had a close friend who happened to be known to the ruler of Medina. This friend often kept him informed about the major news. One day, this friend said to Sawab, a big event is about to take place. Some people have come from Halb in Syria. They have bribed the ruler of Medina and have demanded from him the bodies of Abu Bakr an and Umar an. The ruler has consented to it. Sawab got very worried. Shortly afterwards, a messenger of the ruler of Medina came and took Sawab to the ruler. The ruler said to Sawab, some people will knock at the door of the Prophet's mosque at night. Open the door for them and let them do what they want to do. Don't interfere in any way. Sawab said that he answered the ruler the way the ruler wanted him to answer. He then came back and I was crying bitterly. After Salatul Isha, the doors of the Prophet's mosque were closed as usual. Shortly afterwards, somebody knocked at the door known as Babu Salam. The ruler of Medina used to live in a fort in front of Babu Salam. Sawab opened the door. Forty people entered the mosque. He was counting them one by one. They had equipments to demolish buildings and were carrying torches with them. They were heading towards the sacred chamber. They had not yet even reached the pulpit when the earth split under their feet and they were buried with their equipment then and there. There was no sign left about their presence on the surface of the earth. Allahu Akbar. The ruler waited for them for a while. Finally, he sent for Sawab and asked him, Sawab, did some people not come to you? He said, yes, indeed. They were, however, buried in the earth. The ruler said, think before you speak, how can this happen? Sawab invited him to see the spot with his own eyes. The ruler said, leave the matter as it is. Don't mention this to anybody. 
Samhudi said, Abu Muhammad Abdullah Margani has also described this plot briefly in the history of Medina. He has, however, mentioned that the number of these people was 15 or 20, and they were swallowed by the earth when they had gone only a few steps towards a sacred chamber. Note that the enemies of Allah make plans, and Allah also makes plans. However, Allah is the best planners. Indeed, Allah fulfilled His promise to Prophet Muhammad and Allah will protect you from the people.